the sun has just come up here at the Greenwich Royal Park and what a beautiful setting it is. There's almost a sense of peace and tranquility. Well, there is for me anyway, not for the hundreds of cyclists that have gathered to complete a challenge of a lifetime and all for a very worthy cause. The riders are getting ready to cycle all the way from London to the Eiffel Tower in Paris. It's four days, it's 500 kilometers, and it's gonna be pretty tough. Okay, so good morning, Martin. How are you feeling today? Not too bad, but apprehensive. Um, nope. but feeling good, feeling good. What's inspired you to complete this event? Uh, I lost my son last year um, through leukaemia, um, and he sort of inspired me to do it, so, yeah. What are you most apprehensive about? Um, I think the hills, not knowing where the hills are, but that's maybe a good thing. How do you think you're going to feel on the fourth day? Um, hopefully I'm going to be emotional. It's going to be an emotional thing, especially going down the uh, Champs-Élysées. Um, but, uh, yeah, I think I feel good. Good morning. Feeling a little bit nervous, Ellie? Yeah, I'm really nervous. <laughs> Jimmy's less nervous, but I'm very nervous. But looking forward to it. And great that you're completing this challenge together. Really good. Jimmy's been a really good support and uh, planning all our training rides, which has been good. Without and getting lost. <laughs> and it'll be, yeah, it'll be enjoyable to do it together, and it's good to have his support. And what's going to be going through your mind throughout the challenge, Ellie? Uh, I'll be thinking about my dad a lot. Uh, we lost him three years ago. Um, it still upsets us a lot, um, and we just want to do something in his memory and also to raise money to stop other families going through it. So that's going to be at the forefront of your mind. So what's it going to feel like crossing that finishing line? I dread to think. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's this. quite emotional <laughs> just thinking about it. Um, so to get to Paris and cross that finish line and, and just remember him, I think, um, yeah, I think it will be quite, quite emotional. In fact, I, think I'm, I know it will be very emotional, <laughs> but really looking forward to it and doing something in his memory is just incredible. Sheila and Martin, you are literally set. You're good to go. Feeling a bit nervous, Sheila? Yep. Very How nervous? nervous? I'm actually quite <laughs> petrified. <laughs> now, what's been your inspiration to complete the challenge? I've got lymphoma and I've experienced firsthand the wonderful work that the doctors and the consultants and researchers do and I'm fine so I always feel guilty when I go to the hospital for my checkups um, and I just wanted to do something to make a difference and it was Martin's idea to do this and I kind of pitched in it was my um, idea that I would do this, and then <laughs> Sheila said, "How far is it? How in a kind of?" I could hear her brain whirring, and uh, yeah, how hard can it be? 500k, but, should, but you've never ridden a bike, Sheila. Yeah, I can learn. So here we go. But yeah. the, my inspiration was Sheila. For, since her diagnosis, I've done a number of rides for LLR. So. And when you say you learnt to ride a bike, how recent was that? Uh, a couple of months ago. Well, I, I guess I started. Uh, around the beginning of the new year and I've only really been on a road for the last couple of months. I'm going to give it my best shot um, and it's just fantastic. I'm so excited and I'm so pleased to be here. Now, Jeff, this isn't your first time, is it? This will be my eighth. Um, second time with obviously with leukemia and lymphoma research. Now, what got you into these crazy challenges in the first place? Oh, I, did. I, um, I got diagnosed with uh, leukemia back in 2003 and I got attached to the bike. And uh, people were asking me what's the next challenge. And 2005, I did the tour, Tour de France, and stayed two days ahead. So ever since then, uh, people are always asking what's next. So. It's great to have, we're, we're nearly up to 250 people doing this event, raising a hell of a lot of money for a great cause, so that's it's fantastic. Good luck with the 8th, 9th, 10th challenge that you're going to complete. We'll be keeping uh, in touch with you throughout the next four yeah, days anyway. Look forward to it. The route for the London Paris looks like this. On day one, the riders travel from London to Folkestone before boarding the Channel Tunnel for the quick crossing to France. The second day is an undulating route from Calais in northern France to Abbeville. Two days down and now the peloton have to dig deep on some testing roads. By the end of the third day, we reach Beauvais. 
And the final day is spectacular. The riders leave Beauvais with the dream of riding into Paris, past the Arc de Triomphe, and the finish at the Eiffel Tower. So 250 cyclists all ready to go. So all that's left for me to say is, I'll see you in Paris. The Peloton are supported all the way by everything a bike rider could possibly need. It means they can just focus on turning those pedals. Mechanics, masseurs, medics and a huge support crew are on the road. And importantly, a team of motorcycle outriders keep the riders riding in a safe bubble that's free of traffic. It's a rolling machine that looks after everyone as they face this incredible challenge. First lunch stop, how are you feeling? Uh, quite tired actually, depressingly so, when it's only the first lunch <laughs> stop, yes. Yeah, yeah, quite tired, yeah. Oh, that was a nice sigh of relief, wasn't it? Oh how are you feeling? God. Too many hills, yeah. No, good, feeling good. Yeah. Glad to be here for lunch yeah. and get some food into me. Ned, how are you finding it so far? I'm surprisingly tough, actually. I got on the wheel of John Salako, who played football for a living, so he's really fit. <laughs> well, it was a few years ago, but he's still, um, yeah, I stuck with him for a bit, and then the final 10 miles of this stretch, she just dropped me, which was humiliating, but I'll live with it. I'll live with it. And have you heard any inspiring stories from other people as you're cycling? Absolutely. Uh, it's kind of humbling when, you know, you get an offer to come along and take part in a, in a ride like this, and you turn up and you don't really think it through, but for a lot of the people here, particularly the leukaemia survivors, um, this means everything, this ride. And just to hear some of the stories, and I've only just dipped my toe in the water of, I suspect, what is a very deep pool of experience here. And um, so I've been um, fascinated to meet these people. How are you feeling? I feel not too bad, actually. It's not too bad at all. It's, uh, it's lovely weather, which helps. If it were wet, it would be a different thing, but it's been gorgeous. Okay, so first hurdle's over and done with. How are you feeling? Feeling good. It's a nice pace. We come up the hill by Brands Hatch. We was absolutely flying. Um, I think we get about 26 miles now coming up the last bit of the hill, so it was motoring. anyone ever told you that cycling from London to Paris was easy, well trust me, it's not. Now this hill is called the Wall and the reason being it's very steep and it's so, so difficult to get up. So towards the end of day one, this is where all of our cyclists need the strength and determination to get right to the top because this is what it's all about, it's the challenge. Day one, we started with blazing sunshine and we ended with rain. But now it's over to France. The second day of the challenge today, everyone seems very excited, not quite as nervous as they were yesterday, but they're very aware they've got a long day ahead. So you have a guardian angel on your chest as well. Can you tell me about that? Yeah, that was from my wife. She gave me this little guardian angel, um, patron saint of uh, travellers, so to keep me a bit safe. It was a massively wonderful buzz yesterday. It was a great atmosphere, and 
um, a wonderful experience, but I'm feeling quite battered. Yeah. Uh, it was a long way, and I had no idea that Kent was so hilly. <laughs> Good luck with today. You'll be absolutely fine. We'll be cheering on you all the way. Feeling good? Yeah, day two, section two, it was tough. There was a lot of climbs, but it was uh, enjoyable pain. Now, what would you say to anybody that's thinking about entering the challenge? What would you say, words of encouragement for them to do it? Oh, just just do it. It's uh, it's one of those things, uh, don't sit and think about it. It's I, I think everyone who's come on, on it has come back and has absolutely loved it. If you've got the time, a bit of training, um, no regrets at all. I, I, I can't, I've met one person who hasn't enjoyed coming on this on this trip and it's just fantastic so if you love your riding and you want to do something for charity then get yourself out here food of champions <laughs> it's been great it's a beautiful beautiful day i've got plenty to plenty to work with here um, no it's been a lot of fun now there's somebody on this ride that's been a huge inspiration to others and he's also battled the disease himself i caught up with jeff thomas leukemia and lymphoma researcher a 50 year old charity and played a major part in the successes of children with leukemia. You know, about 30 years ago, it'd be about 80, 85% losing the battle. And now we're, we're talking about 95% of uh, surviving. The survival rate with adults is about 50% at best. And there's some uh, rare diseases, blood cancers, that, you know, it's still too high, you know, in the 80% of fatality. So there's still a lot of work to to do, but they uh, we seem to be catching cancer up, you know, blood cancer in particular, and uh, some great work going on. How much money has been raised in total, and what impact is that money going to have? We're looking about 750,000, 800,000 pounds made from just this one event this year. Where can you see things over the next few years, or where do you want things to be? We just want to see less people dying of this horrible disease, and trying to uh, make the treatment better as well because what I had to go through 10 years ago it's very intense it's radiotherapy chemo and uh, I had a transplant but I'm still here but yeah now for my particular illness you can take a tablet and it's like uh, being a diabetic and having insulin and I know people that are still 10 15 years down the line after they wanted a trial with this particular drug and they're still here. What's it going to be like when you get to Paris, to the Eiffel Tower, to turn around and look at everybody that's raised so much money? What will that feel like to oh, your Look, I've gone goosey, goosebump. I have. Now the cyclists have finished the end of day two here in Abbeville. Now make sure you join me after the break to see some incredibly emotional scenes as the challenge finishes in Paris. forces are sent to disturb us no! oh my God. but Jim my Aviva personal claim manager took care of every step in the restoration of my car so I'm spreading the word now you don't have to make a claim to find out what your insurance company is really like customer claim reviews at aviva.co.uk right people we need ideas for the new pounds to pocket TV campaign 
What have we got? What kind of loans do they do again? Personal loans repaid over a period that's affordable for you. So, the ad could be about finding the right loan. We could have an explorer that comes... Too far-fetched. What about a lighthouse that lights the way through financial emergencies? What about a talking parrot? Pounce to pocket, pounce to pocket. It's good for repetition. Yes. Love that. <laughs> Guys, please. If Pounce to Pocket wrote adverts, they'd be as straightforward as our loans. Find out more at poundstopocket.co.uk. In our bid to make Sky Sports even better, we enlisted the help of the ultimate hero of sport. No, not him. Him. There were some interesting ideas. Drone cam. This is ridiculous. Sofa ref. The sensation suit. In the end, the simplest idea was also the best. A new European football channel. And that's not all. Two years free Sky Broadband Unlimited for our Sky Sports customers. Go to sky.com slash two years free to find out more. Sky. Believe in better. Welcome back. It's day three. It's the 21st of June. So you know what that means? It's the longest day. Well, it certainly will be for some of these riders. So, how are you feeling day three? Yeah, good. Ready to go. Uh, a little bit tired this morning, a little bit jaded, but really looking forward to getting going again. And, um, yeah, we're just having really good fun. Met some really lovely people and just looking forward to riding with them again. So, how are you feeling today, Martin, day three? Not bad. More positive today. Yeah, positive thoughts, manageable chunks. There are some very inspiring people in this peloton. Now I caught up with Martin and Sheila on their journey. Martin started doing these cycle rides because in 2006 I was, um, I discovered that I had lymphoma um, and so Martin got involved with the charity because of that. She's always been a very determined person. You know, part of the reason she's here is because you know, having not sat on a bike six months ago, she's about to cycle into Paris. <laughs> uh, you know, she's, she's one of the most determined people I knew, so I just knew she would do whatever was necessary for herself to, to beat this condition and, ma and manage it. I'm actually okay, I'm one of the lucky ones, but even though I'm a lucky one, I've still benefited from the research um, that's funded by events like this. I can see how the money raised feeds into the research, feeds into the treatment that's made Sheila's condition one that she can manage rather than you know, some, one, one that could potentially be much worse. Stefan, you're increasing the pound signs on the bank balance for the great cause, but losing inches on your waistline, and this is all through cycling. It is. I've lost um, the best part of two stone and three inches on the waist in the last 12 weeks. It's day four. The riders have travelled 400 kilometres so far. Now it's the last push to Paris. One couple who are undertaking this challenge together is Ellie and Jimmy. 
I'm participating in the challenge because I lost my dad to lymphoma three years ago, well nearly three years ago, it'll be three years in August and we just, it was absolutely awful for our family, it like ripped an absolute sort of hole in our family and um, we just want to raise money for, to stop, to help stop other people going through the same thing and also just to stop other people having to go through what my dad went through which was just sort of a complete shock for him he only had sort of five months from diagnosis to when he died and it you know it felt very unfair i can't do anything to replace what we lost what she lost um, she was very close to her dad this ride is brilliant for it it's really inspirational and motivating and um, and, but we are getting there, but it, and, and I know he'd be really proud of us for doing it. have just arrived here in Paris. Now there's going to be some very emotional scenes. This is my sister who um, we're doing the ride. It was her husband that died. So very emotional, but really, really happy we're here. Wow, you've made it to Paris. How do you feel? Pretty amazing, yeah, really, really good. It was absolutely great. That was a great end. It's so good to ride down together. And yeah, feeling amazing and had a few tears, but other than that, which isn't surprising considering I've cried for most of the last few days. But um, no, really, really, really good. What a great thing to do and to do together and with such a great bunch of people. Emotional, happy, yeah. yeah. And what, what was going through your mind? You saw the Eiffel Tower cycling towards it. What was going through your mind? Yeah. Um, it's here. I've finished, I've done it, for sure. Wobbly legs, we're in Paris, how are you feeling? <laughs> overwhelmed, I'm really, really overwhelmed. I'm just looking at the Eiffel Tower and thinking, oh my God, I've done it, I really have done it. It's just amazing, you know, people could do anything if they want to, you really can. You set your mind to it, you could do it. I'm kind of overwhelmed, actually. It's one of the most emotional things, one of the most incredible things I've ever done. Uh, and I don't think it really hit me until it's properly over. But I'm definitely doing it again one day for sure. And oh, yeah. you know, and I said already, you know, the link between events like this to research, to treatment, which has benefited Sheila, and now Sheila able to do this to pay back for what she's received, yeah. which has made her condition entirely manageable. I'm struggling to put it into words actually. Yeah. It's, well, it's, don't it's, put in, it. Inval it's invaluable, <laughs> absolutely invaluable. Don't put it into words. Just hug it out for us. <laughs> I'm so proud of what we uh, we keep achieving every year, you know. People are enjoying themselves, but raising a hell of a lot of money for a great cause. And you said you'd get goosebumps coming towards the Eiffel Tower. Did that happen? Yeah. We were coming down, as soon as we turned around the corner, we saw the Eiffel Tower. There was a woman that absolutely broke down next to me. There was a, a chap who was, uh, got a sign on his back carrying a picture of his son. When people do an event like this, who have lost? They, they do it to keep their son, daughter's name alive and raise money in their name. And, you know, that's a motivation for me to carry on. You know, I've really enjoyed it. It's the medal. It's, it's a real medal and it's heavy.
For some, the emotional journey has been equally as tough as the ride itself. But everybody's here for this same reason, and that's to raise money for leukemia and lymphoma research. Everybody has shown sheer determination, sweat and tears along their way, raising all that money. And what better way to do it than to cycle from London to Paris, 500 kilometers in four days. I hope you've enjoyed it. Thanks for joining me.